Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about exponential functions. To begin, we'll start off with a basic definition. An exponential growth function has the following form. f of x equals to c times b raised to the x, where b is some positive number greater than 1 and c is some constant. For a basic terminology review, remember that b is called the base and x is called the variable exponent. Now the reason this class of functions is special is because this is very different from a polynomial. With a polynomial, you'd have the variable x raised to a fixed power. Here, we have a fixed base raised to a variable power. That's what gives us something distinctly different. In this case, when b is a number greater than 1, we have a curve looking like this. It's always increasing, and this curve gets steeper when b is large. Furthermore, as long as our constant b is a positive number, b to the 0 will always be equal to 1, so the point 0, c will always be a point in our graph. Again, this is because b to the 0 equals 1, therefore f of 0 equals c times 1, which equals c. These functions also have the x-axis as a horizontal asymptote. So if we follow our graph to the left, we notice that it will never touch the x-axis. It will always stay somewhat above it. Therefore, our domain for this function will be all real numbers, because there's no number that I can't take a power of, and our range will be 0 to infinity, again because f of x will never equal to 0 exactly. For our second case, we'll look at an exponential decay function, which will have the following form. It'll be f of x is equal to c times b of x. However, unlike the previous case, b is a positive number that is smaller than 1, and c is still just some constant. So for a number smaller than 1, I'm talking about fractions like 1 half, 2 thirds, or maybe even some small irrational number. The graph looks like this. We have this decreasing slope, it'll always be decreasing, and we still have this y-intercept of 0 c. Taking a positive number to the 0 power still gives you an answer of 1. And just like in the exponential growth function, we still have the x-axis as a horizontal asymptote, because this function will never cross the x-axis. Therefore, our domain will still be negative infinity to infinity, and our range will be 0 to infinity. So fundamentally, this isn't very different than the exponential growth function, other than the fact that this function is decaying other than growing. And that all depends on what the base is. But still, the basic form for an exponential function is that you have a constant b raised to a variable power. Exponential functions are actually very important, and not just in math, but in all the sciences, because they can model growth. For instance, they can model population cells, animals in an area, etc. We'll start out by graphing one. We'll use an xy chart just so we can see everything in gory detail, but then we'll jump to a more general picture. Take the function f of x equals 2 to the x. Since 2, our base, is greater than 1, this is going to be an exponential growth function. And we will evaluate this function at the points negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. As we run through the calculations, negative 2 outputs 1 fourth, negative 1 outputs 1 half, 0 outputs 1, 1 outputs 2, and 2 outputs 4. And so now that we have this data, we can go ahead and draw the graph. I'll plot these points on the xy plane, and then once I'm done with that, I'll connect the dots with a curve. So put simply, that's how you graph an exponential function. If you're using multiple points of data, you get a more accurate picture. But in a general setting, sometimes all you really need is a general picture. You can think of it like an abbreviation for the graph. Sometimes all I'll need to solve a problem really is just two points of data. The x-axis, which will be always the same with an exponential function, and one other point of data, which for us could be the point 1, 2. We'll see in a future slide that you only need two points of information to uniquely characterize an exponential function. But just to finalize on that, generic drawings are good because they're easier to draw and you can distill just as much information out of it. Now let's look at some examples involving graph transformations. So what we'll do is we'll sketch the following graphs, and we'll start with f of x is equal to 4 raised to the x minus 2. Whenever we have to do problems like this, the best thing to do, or rather the best place to start, is to identify the parent function. In our case, the parent function would be 4 raised to the x power, which we can go ahead and draw the generic picture of. Since 4 is a number greater than 1, this is an exponential growth function. So we get a curve like this. But the transformation that's happening here is a subtraction of 2. This means that I'm going to look at a downward shift by 2 units. I can take advantage of the y-intercept here, rather the point 0, 1, and move it down by 2 units. So the point 0, 1 will become the point 0, negative 1. And then all I have to do next is draw a new curve that looks just like the first curve, but move down by 2 units. 
when we do this, we notice that the domain is going to have no change. It's still going to be negative infinity to infinity. However, the range is different. The original graph had a range of 0 to infinity, but since our new graph has been moved down by 2 units, it's going to have a new asymptote of y equals negative 2. Therefore, I'm going to get a range of negative 2 to infinity. This kind of deduction can be kind of hard to do solely in your head. That's why drawing the generic picture is a good idea, because you can just read off the information. Drawing the orange graph below, we see that it goes as far down as the line y equals negative 2, so we can read off our range that way, because the graph is also going to go up forever. For our next example, let g of x equal to 1 fourth raised to the x plus 2 power. Like we did before, we'll identify the parent function of 1 fourth raised to the x power, which is an exponential decay function and has a picture like this. Since I'm looking at an exponent of x plus 2, it means that I'm looking at either a left shift or a right shift. This means that I'm going to take the graph I've drawn in blue and I'm going to shift it either to the left or to the right. Since I'm looking at x plus 2, it turns out this is a left shift by 2 units. So I get this brand new curve. My y-intercept 0, 1 gets moved 2 units to the left and becomes the point negative 2, 0. Then I just have to draw my curve to match the blue one and so that it crosses the point negative 2, 1. Just as an exercise, we'll try to find the new y-intercept. Remember, y-intercepts are found by evaluating our function at the point x equals 0. Doing that, we see that 1 fourth raised to the 0 plus 2 power comes out to be 1 16th, therefore 0 1 16th is our new y-intercept. With graph transformations, normally the domain would be what changes with a left or right shift, but since our domain is already negative infinity to infinity, the domain and the range actually stay the same in this transformation. And by the same, I mean the same as the parent graph. So my domain is negative infinity to infinity and my range is 0 to infinity, because the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0 has remained unchanged. For our next example, we'll look at another graph transformation. We'll sketch the following graph, f of x is equaling to negative e to the x plus 3. But first we'll talk about what this letter e is representing. e, also known as Euler's constant, is this irrational number that goes on forever. It starts off as e equaling to 2.71, and then it's a decimal number that never stops. Sort of like pi. So if ever you see the letter e used in an exponential function problem, all you need to know is that it's some number that you never actually have to write out, you just denote it with the letter e. But going back to our function f of x, the first thing we need to do is identify the parent graph. In our case, that's just going to be e to the x, and since e is a number greater than 1, it's going to be an exponential growth function, which we can draw like this. The next thing to take care of is this negative sign in front of e. Remember that a negative is a flip about the x-axis, which we can draw like so. The reason that it's a flip about the x-axis is because you're taking all of the outputs and changing the signs by multiplying it by a negative 1. That's why you flip the graph this way. The next transformation that takes place is an upward shift by 3 units. That's where this plus 3 comes in. So I will move the entire graph up by 3 units, and it will be drawn like this. Therefore, the third line that I drew in purple represents the function f of x equals to negative e to the x plus 3. Now, let's try to distill some information from this drawing. Like I said before, the domain has absolutely no change, so it's still a domain of negative infinity to infinity. The range, however, is a little bit different, so let's look at this a bit more carefully. We can observe that the range of our parent graph e to the x was 0 to infinity. When we flip this graph about the x-axis, we got a new range of negative infinity to 0, because I'm now below the x-axis. Again, the easiest way to read off range is to draw the picture because you can simply look at the xy plane and just read off what part of the y-axis you're covering. Now both e to the x and negative e to the x have a horizontal asymptote of y equals to 0. However, this upward shift by 3 moves my horizontal asymptote up by 3 units, giving me a new horizontal asymptote of y equals to positive 3. Notice that the way I've drawn it, my purple line will always be below the line y equals to positive 3, therefore my range is going to be negative infinity to positive 3, not including 3. For our next example, we'll move away from graphing questions and start to look at some more hands-on kinds of questions. What we're going to do is construct the exponential function that contains the points 0, 1, and 2, 16. Okay, I lied a little bit. I am going to graph this, but only because that helps me visualize what's going on. If I do graph the points 0, 1, and 2, 16, and I connect them with the curve, 
I see that I should end up with an exponential growth function. Remember, when finding an exponential function, I am looking for a function that has a base raised to an exponent. Since I'm crossing the y-axis at the point 0, 1, it tells me that the constant being multiplied to this exponential will be equal to 1. So I'm ultimately looking at a function that looks like f of x equals to b to the x, where b is greater than 1. For 2, 16 to be a point of this graph, that means that f of 2 has to equal 16. Hence, this means that b raised to the 2 should also equal to 16. And if we solve for b, we see that b is equaling to plus or minus 4. But by the definition of an exponential function, we need to take the positive version of this. Therefore, f of x equaling to 4x is the function that we're looking for. So let's actually do some examples that don't involve graphing. Take the function f of x equals to 2 raised to the x minus 5 plus 6 and find the y-intercept. In other words, we just need to evaluate f of 0. Doing so, and carrying out the calculations, we see that f of 0 equals to 38, therefore the point 0, 38 is our y-intercept. Next, let g of x equal to 3 times e to the x minus 12. We're going to ask, is 3, 0 a point on this graph? What this means is, does f of 0 equal to 3? Well, when we evaluate f of 0, we get an answer of negative 9, so we can conclude that no, the point 0, 3 is not a point in this function. Now let's talk about some motivation for a future video. We're going to talk about the inverse of exponential functions. If we want the inverse of f of x equals to b of x for some b greater than 0, since x is a variable, we can't just say take the xth root of both sides because x isn't necessarily a whole number. Therefore, we have to be a little bit more clever. First, we're going to change the notation and say that y is equal to b raised to the x. So here we have our fixed base b, we have our variable input x, and we have our output of y. This will give rise to something called a logarithmic function, which will look like log base b of y equals to x. So logs work sort of backwards from exponentials. With an exponential, you take b, you raise it to a power x, and then you get an output of y. However, with the log function, you take a log with a base b, you give it the answer, and it told you what power, namely x, you had to take b of to get y. Again, it just sort of works backwards. So please check out my future video on logarithmic functions to learn about this kind of stuff, because it very closely relates to exponential functions. And again, the whole motivation behind a logarithmic function is that it is the inverse of an exponential function.